number 15, the Western Pacific GS64s. Now, before I mention this class, I know some of you will mention number 4460, which is at the museum in St. Louis. The difference is, is that 4460 is a GS6, not a GS64. Before I talk about the differences, let's go into the history. During the time of World War II, the Southern Pacific needed a new locomotive to haul freight trains and passenger trains. So, in 1943, the Southern Pacific ordered 16 GS6 class 484 Northerns. However, the Southern Pacific only got 10 of the 16 engines, numbered 4460 to 4469. The next six engines, which were supposed to be numbered 4470, to 4475 were sold by the War Production Board to the Western Pacific Railroad. Before the six engines were delivered to the Western Pacific, the Western Pacific Railroad decided to add Franklin Booster engines to their GS64s. Besides the Franklin Booster engine and the elephant ear smoke deflectors put on these engines, they're basically a GS6. These six engines were seen pulling freight trains and passenger trains for the Western Pacific for a brief 10-year career until 1953 when the Western Pacific was dieselizing. Three of the GS-64s, numbers 481, 484, and 485, were sold back to the Southern Pacific for part sources, while the other three engines, numbers 482, 483 and 486 were broken up for scrap. The three engines on the Southern Pacific lasted until 1958 when they were broken up for scrap. The only thing that remains of the GS-64s is the tender of 484 at the Western Pacific Railroad Museum. Number 14, the New York Central Niagara's. In the early 1940s, Paul Kiefer, who had designed the Mohawk dual service locomotive, he wanted to up it a notch and make the ultimate dual service locomotive. But because of the advent of the diesel locomotive, only 27 Niagara's were ever built. Other railroads would call the Northern type engines. However, the New York Central decided to call their 484's after the Niagara Falls. The first 26 engines, which were class S1s, were numbered 6000 to 6025. Then, in 1946, a single S2 class Niagara, number 5500, was built. With a boiler pressure of 275 psi and a driving wheel diameter of 79 inches, they could produce 6600 horsepower at the max. These locomotives were seen pulling passenger trains like the 20th Century Limited and the Empire State Express on the New York Central, and they even pulled some freight trains, including the famed Pacemakers. Since the New York Central was quickly dieselizing, the first Niagara to be scrapped was number 5500 in 1951. While the other 26 engines disappeared more rapidly between 1955 and 1956, this is one northern type I would have liked to have seen preserved. It will make a good running mate to the other northern type engines that are running currently today. Number 13. The Central of Georgia's Big Apples. World War II really changed the American railroad industry. One such railroad affected was the Savannah, Georgia based Central of Georgia Railroad. Due to the War Production Board's restriction on designing new engines, the Central of Georgia's K-Class 484s were patterned after the Southern Pacific's GS2s. During their service life, the engines were nicknamed Big Apples by the engine crews on the western end of the railroad. The Big Apples operated in passenger and freight service from Albany, Georgia to both Birmingham and Atlanta. They could handle 1,500 tons between Birmingham and Columbus, Georgia. Birmingham is in Alabama, if you're wondering. They could also hold 2,350 tons from Macon to Americus, Georgia. 
It is also believed that they could handle as many as 17 passenger cars on the Seminole and Flamingo. They lasted in service for 10 years. In 1953, they were all withdrawn for service and were scrapped later that year. Except one. Engine number 451, the first of the Big Apples, was stored in Macon until 1959 when it was scrapped after the railroad failed to find a city or an institution to accept it as a display piece. If a city or institution accepted engine 451 as a display piece, we could have had a 484 in the southeastern United States. Number 12. The Norfolk and Western 442 Atlantic Types J-Class. Now, we are not talking about the 484s that we all know and love. We are talking about the 442 Atlantics. Now, history. <clears throat> in the early 1900s, the Norfolk and Western needed a small locomotive with big driving wheels capable of high speeds. So, in 1903, seven 442 Atlantic Types were built, number 600 to 606 by the Birmingham and Williams Company. Sadly, these locomotives weren't a good fit for the NNW, because with a driving wheel diameter of 79 inches and a boiler pressure that could only produce 21,752 pounds of tractive effort, they weren't really a good fit. So after 23 years of the pulling the passenger trains, the seven Atlantics were retired in 1923 and most likely cut up. Which is really sad, because I also like the 442 Atlantic wheel arrangement, but that's just me. Number 11. Southern Pacific A6 442 Atlantic Type. Before I start, I know you guys are going to say, Hey Mogami, we already have a Southern Pacific Atlantic, number 3025, at the Travel Town Museum in Griffith Park, California. But here's the thing. 3025 is an A3, not an A6. This will be a short spot because there is not a lot of facts about the Southern Pacific A6. The Southern Pacific had four A6s, number 3000 to 3003. What we know about these four engines is that they were actually retrofitted by the SP using four of their existing A3s. In 1927, in the Sacramento shops, 3058 and 3063 were retrofitted to the first two of the A6s. Then, in 1928, in the Los Angeles shops, two other A3s were retrofitted, this time being number 3031 and 3039. Number 3000 and 3001 had their tenders and part of their caps painted in daylight color scheme and hauled the Sacramento Daylight Passenger Train. Sadly, all of them were scrapped by 1952. At least, we have a Southern Pacific 442 Atlantic type still around. The prototype A3, number 3025, or 3025, is at the Travel Town Museum in Griffith Park, California. It's been there since 1952. The footage you're seeing right now is actually my recording of when I visited Travel Town back in 2015 during the early days of my YouTube channel. 